I want to show you a golf swing that hit a golf ball over 400 yards. Check it out. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're going to play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. Years ago, I was frustrated because I lost that. I was confused, I was frustrated, and then I met Mo Norman and learned the single plane swing. And so now, I wake up every day and I know I'm going to hit it well, I know I'm going to play well, I know I'm going to have fun. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're going to go out there and play great because of the single plane swing. Hey, welcome to the channel today. I want to show you Roberto Labrija, one of my students' golf swing. And a lot of people have said you cannot hit the golf ball as far with a single plane swing. Well, anybody who swings on a single plane who does it well knows that's not true. Those of you who watch it and look at it and see the efficiency of it, you all say, you, everybody says, there's no way that swing can hit a ball that far. And I get it because it's such an efficient golf swing that you can't believe it can hit a golf ball that far. Well, this gentleman that I've been working with is Roberto Labrija. Now, it's probably been three years since I, I spent my first time with Roberto. And look, I wanna put this out there first. I don't take any credit for good golf swings. If you go build a great golf swing with what I teach, that's you, that's you doing that. I am simply giving you the information so you can then go build your golf swing. And I like to be a part of you getting better and enjoying that. But I don't take credit for people who work hard at their golf swings and develop really, really good golf swings because that takes a lot of effort. And they, and especially guys like Roberto, they work hard at the swing, but I want you to watch this golf swing. Now, here's the thing about working with Roberto. When I first met him, and I did a video with him a couple years ago down in Orlando. You can go back on my channel and watch the video. He had a lot of inefficient movements in his motion. And it started with lower body, a lot of lower body inefficiencies. His grip had inefficiencies to it. And he took the, he had, he has, you know, he's a fit guy. He, he's, he's got a lot of rotation to swing, so he over rotated. So if you combine all these elements together, you have a very, a very good athlete who is over rotated, not stable, and moving a club very, very fast. And by the way, he was moving the club fast before I taught him, by the way. Okay, so I want you to know that. I, I don't give single plane all the credit for his speed. He's a great athlete and he produces lots of speed. But you know what I did with him? I said, and this is what I told him when I first started working with him. I said, look, listen, I'm going to slow you down. I'm going to slow you down at first because I want you to become more efficient because he was missing fairways. He couldn't score. He hit drivers all over the golf course. He couldn't get the ball in play. He could hit it 360 yards, but he couldn't get it in play. All right, so you don't play the game from the rough in this game. You play it from the fairways. You play it from efficient positions on the course. So I said, let me slow you down. Well, when I, when I slowed him down, he, got, he hit it farther. He started hitting it longer. Now, how did that happen, right? And here's how it happened. Because even though his club head speed probably lost four or five miles an hour, he hit the ball more solid. He had better spin rates. He had launched the ball better and more consistently. So now he's hitting more be better shots from a spin rate perspective, from efficiency. He's getting the impact in a better spot. Well, then he started adding the speed back, and now he's now where you see Roberto today is this amazingly efficient swing that's on plane. So let's look at his golf swing really quickly. So let's first take a look at the face-on view of the swing. Now, the, I'm gonna just point out all the single plane elements to the golf swing. The first is the alignment of the club and the lead arm. Now I recommend that you place the club a little more behind the ball. It's one thing I'm working on with Roberto, but I like to see this alignment of the arm and the club, especially when you get this driver. You can't, you can't let the club head get in front of your hands at a dress. So you see that nice alignment of club up to the lead arm. And then as he takes the club back, we'll go through another element of single plane swing. And you can see he takes it back longer than, than some, but I really like this position because the arms are still in front of his body. So you're seeing the club stay in front of his body here. You're not wrapping the club around your head. So I like this right here, not quite to parallel, and the club at the top of the swing. Now he's bracing against the trail leg, which I recommend. I also recommend the lead foot having a rotation to it. Now as you see him transition, he goes into the flex lead knee. His hands are coming down. Notice the leverage is maintained. And then look at the delivery of the club into impact. And you can see him right here at the moment of impact. 
his club is entering the golf ball. Now look, this is one thing I look for in a great single point swing. Now, if you look at this impact position, it's a classic great impact position. But here's the thing that you see different with a single point swing. The lead knee has maintained its rotation. The trail foot is on the ground and he has realigned this club with the lead arm. Look at the tilt of the body here, very important part of this. And you're seeing him just enter that golf ball, just able to really, really compress the golf ball. And then you see him extend after impact, beautiful into his tilt position. I have him moving his head forward, he, he stays back. So this is a beautiful head movement forward. Watch the G logo between, behind his head, moves nicely forward after he finishes. This is where your foot can come off the ground, by the way, your trail foot can lift. And now he does a nice finish. Look at the head movement forward. I love that body taking stress off the back and the body position. Great swing from that angle. And one quick, one quick note here. I'm, I'm showing you Roberto's swing, but I want you to know that when, when you get high level players like this, that it's all about building in efficiency. So for him, he had lots, he had too much movement. So and I do a lot of measuring on this stuff. So I have to refine the movement down to be more efficient. Some people don't have enough movement or they don't have enough in, their, in certain parts like their pelvis or torso. So you have to know this stuff. This is why you work with instructors because if you're skilled, like I'm very skilled at understanding how the body works, but, and so are all the instructors at Graves Golf. When you understand this stuff, you can see where the inefficiencies are and that's how you can really help somebody. Okay, so let's look at the down the line view here. So now, Roberto's in a single plane. Now, one of the things I had to work on Roberto quite a bit was his lead hand position. He'd get it too weak, and that would get the club into two planes. So this is, sometimes you see his hands get a little low here, but working the club onto the plane. I want you to watch this backswing motion. When that club go, moves into the backswing, it moves onto plane. And then he'll come down, it'll get back onto plane and get to impact. Now, here's what I want you to understand about swing plane is I want you to understand that ideally, you want the club to move to the inside and not on the plane going back. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna explain this. You want the club to move to the inside. I'm gonna, let me do a little demonstration on this before I show you Roberto's complete swing. If, when you set up, the natural motion of the body is everything moves together. Well, the rotation of the body and it's roughly 50 degrees of, of rotation this direction, you take the arms to the top. When you come down and that club's in the same space coming down, your body has a lot less rotation than it did going back. So the, the club position here should be different than the club position here. All right, so, so this claim should be, should be planed, but relative to the body, it's more inside than when you come down. I wanna point that out as we look at Roberto's downswing because because that's the thing I want you to understand is when you're looking at Roberto's swing, you want to see the club move to the inside, not straight back. He has a tendency to take it outside sometimes, which, which gets him dropping it too much from the inside. All right, so let's go back here. Okay, so going into the back swing here, what you want to see is the single plane address looks great here. We got him finally lined up the club with his trail arm. Here's what I look for in the single plane. You want to see the club shaft align with the trail arm and the lead arm needs to be visible of that arm. That tells me that the shoulders are in position. Legs relatively straight, but not locked out. And then you see the club, his arms move to the inside. The club moves up to inside and under the plane just slightly, but the club is planed here. Then he comes down, the club gets back on the plane and then returns back to the plane line. Notice how the trail foot stays on the ground. And notice he's returning the club back to its plane at impact, boom. And then he returns the club even to plane back here. And you wanna see the foot, it can creep up a little bit here, but you wanna stay, stay down all the way to here. And that gives his body space. So again, let's take a look at this. From a single plane position, start the club on the impact plane, plane it going back, plane it on the way down, impact on the plane, and plane it on the way through. And so, so the thing about Roberto's golf swing is you kind of have to understand where he started from is some of the things he was doing that made it difficult for him to square a face was he would get the lead hand in a weak position. And I'm going to tell you what did that. And I'm just going to put this out there. 
big, those big grips you guys keep putting on your clubs affect your hand position. So you keep putting these big grips on, and if you go too big, which he was doing, the radius bone of the arm gets to the side of the club, and the face, the face at the top of the swing was getting wide open. So now, what is he going to do? He has to add rotations to his body and rotations to his hands to square the club. So the first thing we did was we fixed his lead hand position. We got the radius bone on top of the shaft axis from the face on view. We get his body in the proper tilt, which get, put his hand a little more under the club. Then when we fixed his shoulders, the club could go to the inside, get on plane, get back on plane. And then the next big thing with him was keeping his trail foot down. I wanted internal pelvis rotation to give him some space because he kept getting this way. When you let your, when you get external with the pelvis, when the pelvis goes on the outside this way, when you get this out rotating this way and not from the inside internally, what happens is the torso gets over rotated. So you saw he had too much pelvis rotation, which caused too much torso rotation. So that's the detail of analyzing a player that swings the club ball speeds in the 185 mile an hour range, hitting balls over, you know, he hit one the other day 400 yards, but when I was hitting balls with them and he was hitting, you know, they're averaging 330, 320, that was just average. So his bad ones were going 310, his good ones were going 330, 340. That's what you see in a really efficient, good athlete swinging on a single plane. And look, I'm only five foot nine, so I watch him hit golf balls and I'm, I'm bunting out there about 280 yards and it's fun to watch it, him hit that ball that hard. It's, it's a joy to watch him play. Hopefully you'll get to see him play sometime. He's on the Latin American tour, you should check him out. And we'll keep watching him and see if he can take that single plane swing and go win on a major stage. Thanks for joining me. Click the bell icon, give me a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next video.